You said this meeting's being live streamed. Yes. Oh. Blessings and welcome to our Facebook Live with Reverend Dexter Peltzer, Dr. Mary Kay Baxter, and myself. Wow, <laughs> what a blessing to be with you here today. Yes. Teresa, come here. Today's hey, program so is amazing. <laughs> Um, before we start, we have a praise report. Yes. Even um, collecting donations for the books for the prison. Well, that ministry is giving a lot of fruit. Yes. And I want Sister Mary to talk about it because we want to encourage you to please continue to give because they want more. Requests for new books. Yes. 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 Go ahead, Mama. Why don't you give a testimony of what they shared with you? Okay, honey. Uh, we want to thank the people, too, for giving their donations extra to help the Amen. prisoners. I mean, we'd like, I think it was 10 prisons. We sent lots of books and lots of boxes, too. But one letter I got from a young man had been writing to me like two years. And he, uh, when we got his box, there was just heaven and hell books. But I'm going to send him another box of a mixed box because there's 900 in that jail. And he sent a letter that he went into the chaplain's office to check and see if the books came because we negotiate on mail. And the, the, the chaplain said, we want to show you a video, Miss Mary, with Bill Weiss, I think, Bill Weiss, because we did a video years ago, Dexter, of, with real Hollywood hell scenes in it. And we have that available for people if they want it. It's very inexpensive. And uh, we, we have that. It's on the CD like this. It's CD. But what happened, they showed it to the prisoners, and many of them are coming to God. So these people are a part, right, extra of saving these precious souls because we all been through things, and we all do things wrong. I mean, we're not bad like a lot of people, but we're not, Dexter. But what happens when people get out there in the streets and murder and kill and steal? They have to be a law to put that in order so they can get go to get their punishment for that because it's wrong, Dexter. But yet God wants to save everybody, everybody, every nationality, every person, don't need Dexter. Amen. Amen. And people will turn from their wicked ways back unto God. He will forgive them, Dexter, won't he, Mars? Yeah. So that's the kind of God we are, and we really appreciate it. And also you can order books from my website. It's uh, Mary K. Baxter inc.com and you can order we have 12 books and we'll be talking about them later on but there's one that i want to show the people it's got notes all over it heaven yeah. and hell and this one is whitaker did a new cover dexter and it is selling really good it's a limited edition and yeah. we're about out of those but here's the book that they did a new cover on hell dexter remember yeah. it used to be blue mm -hmm. and they changed that yeah and so many people are reading that and taking their Bible as we're going to today and checking out what's in the book. It goes That's with right. the Bible. Amen. And today, Dexter has a mighty uh, message to all of us, and we're just going to let him take over. <laughs> yeah, and there's two other things you shared with me about the letter from the prison mama. Yeah. Uh, reinforce one is that they showed him that video to not just a few, but hundreds of the prisoners. Yes. Uh, and secondly, that the prisoners who had your books are writing that they, they, they can't go to sleep. They're just reading in, in <laughs> their cells. They're reading their books and, and, and like they go to sleep with their books with them and they can't put them down, um, which I am so thankful for. And I feel the spirit right now. And Father, I want to pray that you bless everyone. Yeah. Yes, God that is receiving these books. Yes save their souls father yes that, god that in their hearts and let the truth and you glory to god set them free because it says mm. he sets free is free and mm. thank you lord for setting them free forgiving them of their yes spirit, lord by your precious blood of your son father so yes god with all of us in eternal life in heaven yes thank you yes and the other thing you shared with me was that that the one of the wardens of the prison has asked for uh, a new box of mixed books. So you've had the, the heaven and hell books, but now they want the mix mix. So the divine revelation of Satan's deceptions, divine revelation of angels, all the uh -huh. other 
Still like uh, what, 11 other, 10 other books, 11 other yeah. books? Yeah, and Dexter, when people give to donations, we use that money specifically for books. And they say yes. donations for prison books. And yes. you know, fruit, I just have to say this because the spirit phoned me. You know, this is beautiful fruit for saving souls. And yes. for one of the revelations you gave us, um, Mama, and, and others have confirmed this, is remember when they made the diamond for the uh, mansion in heaven? And you yes. Did of that and it's in your book the divine revelation of heaven and that you know that there's like diamonds made in in people's mansions um like for every soul that's saved um, yes and, and that astonishes me that the lord prepares a place for us in it's a mansion and the glory of that mansion is commensurate with our going out and preaching the gospel and getting people saved and mm -hmm. be a part of this um, as the Lord leaves, you only give if you're going to give with joy, but this is an important ministry. And the more you give, the more she can give to the ministries. Yes, Lord. Yes. That's what's important. And, it, and the angels keep records, Dexter, every time we give. <laughs> amen. Amen. And yes. I'm thankful for that, Mama. I love your yes. ministry of setting the captives free. It, it's exactly what Isaiah 61 anoints us for, um, is to set the captives free. So praise the Lord for that. Um, okay, so let's pray, Mama. Okay. Um, okay. Wait, do you want to give the website one okay. more time? Yeah, it's um, Mary Kay, www.marykaybaxterinc.com, okay? Hallelujah. And please um, join through the Facebook Live on Sister Mary's website and Facebook, Mary Kay Baxter, through Shalom Shalom, or through... Uh, Marisol Peltzer, okay? Um, we love you very much. Um, and I'm very excited. Today's program, when Dexter told us the title, me and Mama were like, oh, KKK, 666, whatever. <laughs> we're like, we were, we were, I was like, 666? Oh, Lord. Oh, KKK. That, to me, that's like danger, 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 okay? <laughs> it's like, oh, that's scary. So today is a teaching. Dexter's going to do a I'll lot of teaching. I'll talk to you about teaching. that later, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and it was a, a word that we used in my family, like, oh, que, que, que problema. Like, oh, that's a big problem. Like, yeah. que, que, que problema. So, <laughs> that must be a Latin thing. Yeah, that's a Latin okay. thing. So, and me and Sister Mary are going to be sharing um, testimonies and supporting what he says, but this is a very heavy, heavy teaching. So please take out a notebook, a pencil, and take notes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And it's 666, the mark of the beast. And um, Mama said earlier on, on uh, while she was speaking that, you know, those prisoners are actually um, looking up in their Bible, even prisoners, and, and writing that they're testing the words that she wrote in her books and whether they line up with the scriptures. Um, and because the Lord says, test all things. So we're going to actually talk about scripturally in the word of God. And God gives us a lot of markers and tells us to be wise about the end times mm -hmm. and not, not surprised. And we need to understand that. Um, and the end times, one of the end times um, things that is very important is not to take the mark of the beast, the 666 or the name of the beast, it says, mm -hmm. or to worship the beast. Um, and, and so we need to know is, are we in those times? Or are those times to come? And does the Bible actually tell us? And the answer is yes. The Bible does show us when these times will come. And it's rather specific and it's confirmed in multiple areas, which we're going to talk about. And, and the reason for this is, I wanna make sure that um, whenever we hear something or a teaching or a prophecy or anything else, we test it. And if, any teachings or prophecies are saying, listen, the mark of the beast is, is right now, and it can be occurring right now, then we need to test that, okay? And let's do that. Let's do that according to the word of God. And let's start with Matthew 24, 15 through 21. <clears throat> now, this is going to be quite a teaching, and uh, there's not a lot of scriptures, but within each scripture that we're reading, there's a number of verses. And we need to read the totality of the word in this so that we get the revelation of the truth. And it's very specific with regard to this. So let's, let's go to what Jesus says first. Jesus is asked by his disciples, what will be the sign 
of your coming and of the end of the age. Well, wow, we're, this is what we're talking about right now. And one of the things that happens right before the end of the age is the possibility of people receiving the mark of the beast. We're going to see that in the scriptures. And Jesus even refers to it. Wow. And he refers even to where it's at, a principal scripture of it. And Daniel, because remember, Daniel was already written at the time of Christ. So we're going to have some great scriptures and confirmation of what Jesus is saying. So let's go to 20, uh, Matthew 24, 15, where Jesus is talking and answering that question. What will be hmm, the sign of your coming, your coming again, and of the end of the age? And he says, I'm going to actually start in verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And now he's going to go into more detail. So he's kind of given, listen, there's going to be wars, rumors of wars. People's love will grow cold. Lots of things are going to happen. And it's important that we know his audience here are the Jewish people. We're going to read a scripture later where his audience is specifically the church in Thessalonians. And that's really important because that's going to actually refer to the rapture. So we need to know who the audience here is. It's the Jewish people. And we need to know a simple fact that Jesus returns in the battle of Armageddon. We know this in Revelation. We know this in Zechariah. We know this in Daniel. We know this in many places that he returns in the battle of Armageddon. His saints come with him on white horses and he vanquishes all the enemies of Jerusalem and Israel. He vanquishes them. And then all Israel was saved. It tells us that in Zechariah and in Revelation. And then, guess what? The millennium starts, where Christ will rule and reign from Jerusalem. And these scriptures and all around the scriptures of the Old Testament that we're going to go to all refer to this. So, but before Jesus comes, Israel and the world are in the middle of the tribulation. The last seven years, which Daniel will speak of that Jesus refers to. They're in the last seven years, and this is where we're going to focus, giving everyone the big picture scripturally. We're going to be focusing on the last seven years of this earth before Christ's return, when all Israel is saved. A very important time, and includes the great tribulation, the last three and a half years, where God's wrath is poured out scripturally. These are all very important. Because the Lord tells us, and the scriptures tell us, that the saints will not be subject huh, to the wrath of God. And so we believe, as saints, we're not going to be subject to the great tribulation. We'll go to these scriptures. They will be much more clear in a moment. But I want you to get a vision of where we're going for the mark of the beast. It's going to be the last seven years in the scriptures of the time before Christ's return. All right. Now. Jesus starts talking about it in Matthew 24, 15, and my Bible calls it the Great Tribulation. He says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet st standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of the house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. So again, he's talking to the Jewish people because they're the specific object of the wrath of Satan when he was, re he was released from heaven and came to the earth. For then there will be great tribulations. This is defining this as the great tribulation which we know scripturally is the last three and a half years of the tribulation. And then there will be great tribulations such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This is a one-time event. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is Christ or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. All right, let's jump to verse 29. And he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Now, these are things referred to in Joel chapters, you know, read Joel chapters 1, 2, 3. This is all over Joel. 
And it is also in Zechariah. It's in many places. So go to your word. It says, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, huh, will mourn. We've read about that previously. That's in Zechariah. Every family will mourn by itself, and they will. And Zechariah specifically says they will see him who they pierced with the spear in the side, and they will understand that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, was the Messiah who died 2,000 years ago. This is very important. And they will mourn because the Messiah they've been waiting for, they actually understand now that Israel put them him to death. False accusations against him. Their decision not to have the thief released, but Jesus put to death. So they will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. All right, so now we have Jesus marking a very important event, the abomination of desolation, which is going to happen in the temple. So now we're going to look at other scriptures that refer to this, specifically the one in Daniel that he refers to. Yes. So can you define for them the abomination of desolation, what it is? Yeah, it's it in the is, scriptures. It is when there is a unclean sacrifice made at the altar of the temple of God, which will be constructed by that time. And the temple is not constructed now. Okay? We're going to go to all that. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So, so Marisol is really jumping ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> But that's okay. Um, there are going to be, the reason why we're learning about this is there are specific events that the word says have to happen first. And one of them is the temple has to be rebuilt. We're gonna see that. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because it's a marker that the sign of the beast could not be occurring now. Okay, because... in the scriptures, it's impossible. Okay, but let's go to the scriptures so they show us all this, mm -hmm. okay? Daniel 9. Um, Daniel's being shown like the end of history. And he's praying for the people of Israel to be restored to Israel, get back to the promised land, all sorts of things. And the Lord gives him a vision, oh my goodness, that basically gives him what is the destiny of Israel is, which is the 70 70 weeks determined for the history of Israel. We know that there's a break in them between the 69th and the 70th week. We know there is. But prophetically, we also know this has been fulfilled from the time of the decree of Cyrus to the time where Jerusalem came on the donkey into Israel is fulfilled in the number of weeks prophesied here times seven. In other words, seven years for each week. And if you understand that, you're going to understand that this prophecy that Daniel was given was accurately fulfilled. That means the end time part of this will also be fulfilled. Amen. All right. So let's turn to Daniel 9.27. So, but again, in verse 24, it's 70 weeks are determined. I'm going to read that first. For your people, again, this is to, for Israel. For your people and for your holy city. So this is referring to Jerusalem to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, because this refers to Christ, to bring an everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Because you know what? Once Jesus returns and is ruling and reigning from Jerusalem, the word says we're not going to need prophets anymore. I mean, they're not going to be necessary, and people will stop prophesying. And if they do prophesy, there's even a penalty that can be put to death. So there's not a need for prophecy when Christ is here. All prophecy is always pointing towards Christ. So let's go to verse 27. Now, this is talking about... Is that in Daniel? Honey? Yes, Daniel 9, 27. Okay. This is talking about the last week of the yeah. 70 weeks, the last week. And listen to what he says. Then he which is the devil, shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. 
But in the middle of the week, that's at three and a half years into the week or seven year period, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined to pour out on the desolate. So right here, we have a marker for us. One, that the temple will be in place in the last week, Marisol, mm -hmm. as you alluded to. And number two, the temple we know is going to be built back on the Temple Mount. And we already know, because we went to Israel, that all the plans for the temple are already in place, including the sacrificial offering. The altar has already been built. The instruments are already there in place. We so saw them. We saw them in Israel. And in we the saw the video where the Israelites say that in this generation, we will see the temple rebuilt. So Israel is ready for this. We saw it at the Temple Institute, which is located right in Jerusalem, right in the center of Jerusalem by the Wailing Wall. You go up the stairs and there is the Temple Institute. We saw the the, the actual play, um, altar for sacrifices that yes. they have is already built. The garments for the priests, the, the garments the sacrifices, for the priests, the instruments, the instruments, everything's ready. Yeah. So, wow. And let me just tell you, this is going to occur. The temple will be rebuilt and it is prophesied. And we're going to see this in other scriptures too in a moment, the reference to the temple. So mark that, please, because this is muy, muy importante, as Marisol likes to say, very important that we understand the markers for the end times. And we're going to see in a moment that this is also a marker that occurs before the rapture. And yes. Dexter and I went all went to the Temple Mount, okay, um, the, which is the area where the temple's going to be built. At this time, that area is occupied by uh, a Muslim temple by and, a Muslim and the Dome of the Rock. By the, the Dome of the Rock Both. is occupied. But there's space to the side. There's space to the side. Where a, a temple could be rebuilt for Israel. for Israel. There's enough space on the Temple Mount. But no, the building hasn't started. Everything's ready. And in the video that we saw, we saw a grandfather and a little child, and the Israelites made this statement: "This generation will not, not pass, pass to rebuild the temple." No. I my I was amazing. I okay. know what a prophetic word. Was Without I, yeah, and you have to remember this is written by people that um, largely, it, almost exclusively, that would be involved in that because they're talking about bringing back the sacrifice of the temple that they would not believe. In Yeshua being the Messiah at this point. So this is amazing that they're prophesying something for this generation, which is actually, we're going to see if we get to it, which is the parable of the fig tree, which is this generation shall not pass, starting from the reformation of Israel and Jerusalem, 1967, this generation shall not pass until all these things are consummated. This is a prophecy of Jesus. And we're going to see that a marker of that we're in the end times is the formation of Israel. So let me just, in my own heart, I am convinced scripturally that we are in the end times and we are part of the last generation that will see all these things. And I think that's really um, important that we all understand where we're at prophetically. And we'll get to that. There's a lot we're going to get to. Mm -hmm. So Daniel 9.27, very important. But let's go to Daniel 12, 10 through 12, where um, the Lord keeps giving Daniel more revelation about this. Listen to this. He just tells Daniel the last words he gives to Daniel. Listen, Daniel, go your, word, your way, um, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. And, and we know all these words are, you know, now no longer sealed. The scrolls, everything are, are fully revealed. And it says, verse 10, many will be purified, made white, and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly, wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. This is why we're teaching this. What a word to Daniel. This is over you and I. The wise shall understand the sign of the end times. And even when it talks about the 666 in, the, in a moment, we'll say, he who has wisdom, let him figure this out. I mean, these are not supposed to be things 
that we are not aware of the times and seasons for. We're gonna see these are laid out prophetically very well by the scriptures. So, the wise shall understand. And from that time, the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, the daily sacrifice, what? In the temple. And the abomination of desolation is set up. There shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Guess what? That's three and a half years, people. From the time that the devil is revealed, remember, he makes a treaty with Israel. We read that for seven years. And you can just imagine at that point, there's some kind of peace between the Israelites and the Arabs that allows Israel, as part of that peace treaty, to build the temple. And believe me, you look at things now in the Middle East, and you're like, whoa, there's a lot of hate and anger and everything else. Well, this Antichrist is going to have the power to bring a treaty of peace. And he's going to allow the sacrifices for three and a half years. But then at the end of the three and a half years, he is going to go sit in the temple and declare himself God. Wow. How do we know that? Well, that's what the abomination of desolation is. And you're like, well, maybe you're just guessing that. Well, hmm. I don't know about that. So because there's specific scriptures that will tell us that. We'll get to them in a second, in 2 Thessalonians. Let's go to Zechariah 12 first. Let's keep building this up. Zechariah really is a great book to describe the end times and how Christ will return. An excellent book on this. A lot of revelation like Daniel. All right, so Zechariah. <clears throat> 12, 9 through 10. This is the Lord. My header is the coming deliverance of Judah. And this is where in the battle of Armageddon, God will come and defeat all the enemies of Israel. And this book talks about that battle very succinctly. And even talks about the saints will come with the Lord in that battle. And we're going to, and even in Revelation, it talks about we come with the Lord in the end of Revelation into the battle of Armageddon, and the Lord smites the enemies, and fire, I don't know, they melt, is the best way I can put it. Listen to what he says. It shall be in that day, being the last day, that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. This is God speaking. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. We just read that, right? By Jesus. Yes, they will mourn for him, being the Messiah, as one mourns for his only son, and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. So here we have, listen, an important marker that of the end times, which is that we're supposed to pray for the peace of Israel and the salvation of Israel. Yes. God, Lord Jesus, come. Come quickly for all Israel to be saved. Jesus. This is the event. They will see the Messiah. They will recognize him who they put to death 2,000 years ago, and they will mourn every family by itself. So wow. really important that we understand God's purposes. So when, hey, what does Paul say? All Israel will be, be saved. saved. Yes. Five. <laughs> yes, which is one third. We one know that's third. even prophetic. Because that's in Zechariah and other places that one third of them survive, two thirds of them that die in the Great Tribulation, Marisol. The Great Tribulation, none of us want to be in, I can assure you. And none of us want to go to hell because Mama talks about hell all the time. So, Zechariah, let's stick to it for one more second. Zechariah 14 9. <clears throat> now, chapter 14 is the day of the Lord. Um, this is the day when the Lord returns, and it says, he, with all the saints, come with them and defeat the enemies of Israel. And it says in verse 9, this is the end of the matters. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day it shall be, the Lord is one and his name one. And the people shall dwell in Jerusalem, and no longer shall there be utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited, verse 11. 
I mean, listen, and then it talks about the plague that struck against all that came against Israel, which, by the way, is Joel, when it calls everyone to the valley of decision. Wow. The wicked nations. Remember, Satan gathers the wicked nations to come against Jerusalem. And the Lord says, listen, you want to come against Jerusalem? You're going to be destroyed. And he calls yes. to the valley and to the battle of Armageddon. And they come and they surround Jerusalem. And they many bad things happen, many die. But as we know, in Zechariah 14, it says the Lord goes and fights for him and he actually stands on Mount Olive in verse four and breaks it in two and then a large portion being one third of the Israelites escape through the valley that's created by Jesus standing on the mountain and splitting in two, creating a new escape for them and they escape. And I think sir, can I say something? That yes. chapter 12, look at the, the power of God. And he said, in this shall be the plague where the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Yes. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Think about the power of God. I mean, God is angry. He's really angry His at the people yes. because of all the years of garbage and stuff. And many people I've heard lately say, why does everybody pray for Jerusalem? Well, money we need to. That's a holy place. They're holy people that serve God. Believe they are, Dexter. When we went to Jerusalem, the little children, 16, 17 years old, dressed in army uniforms with guns, protecting many holy places, didn't they, Dexter? Yes. And God, right here, I've never noticed that till you brought it to light. That chapter, verse 12, is very serious. Isn't it? Oh, it's 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 hard. Can you read it again, Dexter, to us? Read it, 12, verse 12. <clears throat> and this shall be the plague. Again, Zechariah 14, 12. This is the day of the Lord when he comes in the battle of Armageddon with the saints. Dear Lord. And um, and I just, I want to read this first, Mama, because everything's scriptural, people. Please yes. read your yes. word. Verse 5. Thus yes. the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. Verse five, that matches the end of Revelation where yes. it's a white horse to smite everyone in the battle of Armageddon. Hallelujah. And with them. Yes. It matches. Hallelujah. And again, matching what Jesus said, it shall come to pass in that day that there shall be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor light. But at evening time, it will happen that it will be light. This is the same prophecy just read in Matthew 24. Everything fits together. It is already preordained, but we're going to see very wow. soon that the mark of the beast is in the middle of this. Please understand the truth so we are yes. deceived. Okay, so. <clears throat> and next three. Their flesh should be consumed away while they stand upon their feet. Yeah, read. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Oh my God. To consume away in their dissolve. Mind. I like my translation. Dissolve. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets. This is New King James. Wow. And their tongue shall dissolve in their mouths. Oh my God. I mean, it sounds like a nuclear bomb goes off. And 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 it says in another scripture that God releases his fire on the last day of wrath. And and you know the fire of God. I can. I mean, we're talking about. He created the sun. Imagine. He the created fire the sun. Himself. Can you imagine a nuclear weapon is nothing compared to what the Lord's power is to create the universe. So for this to happen is frightening. And wow. and what's also scary about it is Joel says that who he calls to the battle of Armageddon against Israel are those who also divide up his land. And took his people captive. How many people want to give Israeli land for the sake of peace and divide it up? What God has ordained is, is for the Israelites. Well, these are the same people that it says in the word that he calls to the battle of Armageddon. I'm telling you, we think it's okay to have things that we 
stand for and everything else. But please make sure what you're standing for is what God stands for. Don't go against God in what you stand for, whether it's abortion or it's dividing up the land of Israel. These are serious things. You could be one of those that's called to the battle of Armageddon. And you're going to be deceived. By the way, the scriptures say, I didn't read it, but it's right there in Zechariah and it's right there in the others. It's right there in 2 Thessalonians that the Lord will send a delusion and people will be deceived and follow the devil. Yes. I think you're above that if you're oh my God. your heart that are against God. And one of the things that God is for is that the land that he has ordained for Israel is Israel's. Please understand that. Okay. I, I'm sorry, but too many of us just take things casually, like who cares? I'm talking about your eternal destination. I care that we know the truth. I We're care too, Dexter. We it's don't want horrible. you to go to hell. We love you. Yeah. Now, the, the really important scripture that's written to the church. To us. That references to both the rapture and to the mark of the, uh, and to the desolation abominations in the temple. Yes. And then we're going to go to the scripture that talks about the mark of the beast. Second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 10. One of the most important scriptures in the Bible that is being confirmed by everything we read. Believe me, but it makes it very succinct here. This is written to the church. Remember, Matthew is written to Israel. Yes. Is written to the church, which he promised that the true believers will not incur the wrath of God the last three and a half years of the tribulation. The word promises that. So let's read what this says. Now, brethren, Concerning the coming, and listen to the words carefully, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you. Wow. Okay. If you read about the rapture, how does it describe it? Christ comes in the clouds with all the angels and we're gathered together to him, right? What does it say? First the dead will arise and then those who are alive on the earth, the saints at that time will be gathered together with them and will be with them forever. Please understand this is different than his second coming when he comes down with the saints who are already with him at that time for the battle of Armageddon. This is the saints being gathered to him. Wow. We ask you, so, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter or by false teachings or false prophecies. As if from us, as if the day of Christ had come, or as we're going to see in a moment, as if the mark of the beast is already here. Very important. Let no one deceive you by any means. And here's what I'm going to say. The word is very clear about this. I could, I could do a whole teaching on it because I've a vow to walk in the truth with the Lord and only his truth. If you want to believe a lie, you will find everything to support your belief in the lie. You'll even find scriptures that somehow you twist them enough and they bring forth the lie. You will find many false teachers and prophets who will bring forth lies. If you want to believe a lie, there's even a scripture in the Old Testament where God sends those people lying prophets. Yes. Yes. Because that's what they want in their heart. The Lord told me to say this. In your spiritual walk, this is how you read the Bible. You read the Bible to determine. To form the truth. To form the truth. Not to confirm your beliefs already. You don't, so you come with a blank slate for the Lord to show you and to teach his you truth, his truth. Which is the only truth. Yes, yes. You don't come with your idea and find ways to support it. Yes. A spirit teach you. God, and it says the spirit will bring you into all truth you have an anointing yes Dexter. to bring you into all truth only when you don't grieve the spirit and you want the truth one of the mightiest things from the word of god i could ever tell anyone is what marisol just said yes stop trying to have your truth confirmed by false prophets yes Dexter. please 
Believe in only the truth that the word of God gives you. Say, what does the and test the all things. says? What does it say about the Bereans? Paul they says. They tested Paul. They tested Paul. I mean, come on. We're supposed to test all things the Bible says. And this is what we're doing right now. Now, let's read the scripture because I want I want this hammer, and this is a hammer to, to reach people. We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word of our letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, when we're gathered together in, with Christ, will not come. That day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Do I believe we're in a process of a falling away? Absolutely. So I would confirm in my heart that the falling away has already begun in many ways. Number two, and the man of sin is revealed. Satan, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or all that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That hasn't happened. Is the temple even built? No. But are there plans for it to be built? Yes. So then, listen, and I've taught on this extensively over three big teachings about the rapture. I gave both sides of it, whether it's pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation. You know, if you're an Israelite, it's post-tribulation, and you can get the scriptures for that. Why? Because all Israel is not saved until they see Christ return in the battle of Armageddon with all the saints, and they see him who they pierced. Absolutely, that's post-tribulation. But for the church, is it pre-trib or is it mid-trib? Hey, Dexter, can I say something? Yes. When yes. Jesus showed me hell, he showed me a tank of fire, a metal tank. It said on it was written the abominations of desolations. He said when people teach, tell lies and false prophets, as we're talking about, if they don't repent, that when they, they die or their death comes, they're thrown down in a, sled, a slide into the liquid fire and they're burning and they still feel everything because they're in hell and they're bobbing up and down in this liquid fire and on the side of this tank is written the abominations of desolations and mm -hmm. even uh -huh. today there's such many false prophets i get calls all the time saying that 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 shot is the mark of the beast i said no that's not true a bunch of people are terrified uh, and uh, that's not what you'll see, you know, the mark and everything. That ain't, that ain't it. Do you guys hear that? Too? Yeah, and we're, we're going to, um, but let me, <laughs> let me reaffirm the teaching, Mama. First. Okay, honey. Okay, uh, go ahead. To catch the truth and to have it written, I ask, Lord, unto our minds, souls, and spirits, and <laughs> our hearts. Yes, yes. Um. So... It says, do you not remember that when I was with, still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, which is yes. what Mama's saying. And, and, and John said it. There's many spirits of Antichrist that have been out in the world and operating through people. Come on, we all know this, because John says it. In, in little John, it says, for the mystery of Lois is already at work, only who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Well, guess what? This is my personal belief from these scriptures that what is restraining the evil of the world is only one thing, the Holy Spirit and the workings of the Holy Spirit through the saints. That's what's restraining evil just taking over. Yes. And think about it. So if it says it's going to be taken away. Well, he's talking about when, when the saints all leave the earth at that time and are gathered together with Christ in the air. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit goes with them, right? And and I believe yes. that point because it is the start of the great tribulation. And literally, gateways yeah. are opened and many foul things are coming out. And the devil has full authority to destroy. The word says that. So. This is happening, I believe, at this point, perhaps without the Holy Spirit, which is very scary. 
And so it says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. Let that sink in. Yes. They did not receive the love of the truth that they made. Right, be. Dexter. Wow. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion. That's right, honey. Leave the lie. Wow. And they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Let me tell you something. It is pleasure in unrighteousness to go against God. And what he says is the truth and form your own truth against what God says is the truth. When you can test it and find it in the word. There is no excuse when we appear before the judgment of ignorance. There is none. The scriptures take care of that in Romans 1 and other places. There is no excuse for ignorance. Dexter, can I say something with that? Yes. What you're saying, honey, and Marcel agree. We've got calls from people that are halfway in God and halfway in the devil. And they'll try to trick us in their conversations to agree with their sinful nature. I'm telling you the truth. They'll talk about their pastor and yet they're lusting after their pastor. They're, they're a bunch of uh, hypocrites. And when you confront them, saying, what are you talking about? Oh, I need a word from the Lord. Well, honey, you better straighten yourself up because if, if they, they want to trick us to believe what they want, but they don't truly serve our God, do they, Marisol? Mm -hmm. We've got calls like that for years. And when you help them and show them the word of God, Dexter, that they are so full of the devil, they don't want to hear God's word. So they make up all this false stuff. And it's the truth. I get calls many times for prayer. And they'll say, now, don't pray for this. I want this. I say, hey, you know, something's wrong with you. You better get on your knees and repent to God. Because there's right. a bunch of hypocrites out there. They, they want us to say nice things to them, Dexter. But the Holy Spirit will not allow us to. There's young people that need help in churches and ministers to help them. But we have to understand that what he's preaching, y'all, is truth. Because what's going to happen, these halfway in Christians, halfway out sin, go sleep with a different man every night, go out and lie, cheat, and steal. The day's going to come when God's going to call to, hey, it's time to walk straight. It's time to repent. And that's why he's trying to tell us we got to check out our lives. Don't we, Marisol? We can't yes. play games with God. See, because when the rapture comes, right? Yes. Yeah. The, church, the people who are saved in Christ, who are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And all the people that are left are the people that are not saved. So that's why Dexter thinks. Yes. The Holy Spirit's not going to be here because we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit, God could release the Holy Spirit if people believe at that point. Right. Because they're going to be warned in a second. Right. We're going to read in Revelation not to take the mark of the beast. Right. During this very time. We're going to see this in a second and because of that i believe some can be saved and because we i also believe that you know 144,000 jews go out and proclaim the gospel and the one right? that during draws, the tribulation so that the the holy spirit is that draws people up to salvation so he will be working but, the, but they're martyred so they know martyred. that because they show them in revelation so they have to pay a price they're put to death because they won't worship the beast mm -hmm. so we're going to see some things in a moment in revelation that now bring okay so let's keep going. This okay. is the last okay. of the revelation here. Revelation, revelation honey. Yes. Wow. Revelation 13, the mark of the beast. Okay. The timing of this is marked as mid-tribulation. This is going to astonish you. Remember the last three and a half years, 42 months. Listen to this. I'm going to start with Revelation 13. 1. I want you to hear the whole thing. And remember, there's two beasts. A lot of people forget that. There's a dragon. There's two beasts. There's the first beast and the second beast, which we're going to see in a moment, who makes you worship the first beast and get the mark of the first beast or the name of the first beast, which is the alluding to in wisdom, the name being 666 in some form. So we're going to see this, but there's two beasts. Don't get confused here. You're going to see this very clearly in the scriptures. 
This is talking about during the tribulation, people, this is what Revelation, these chapters are all about. The middle of the tribulation, listen. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, beloved John, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. This is the name that people are going to either worship, this blasphemous name. It's so blasphemous, it's not even put in the Bible here. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, Satan the dragon, his throne and great authority. And this is preordained by God to allow to happen, to punish the earth and the people of the earth who go against God. Remember, that's the purpose of the great tribulation, punishment. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. This is the first beast. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Here it is. Listen, this hasn't occurred. But listen carefully. You're going to understand why people are going to worship this beast. Because he's miraculously healed. So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship this beast saying, who is like the beast? Who was able to more, make war with them? I mean, he even gets healed from a mortal wound. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. What? Against God, of course. Wow. Given authority to continue for 42 months. The great tribulation. Here it is. The beast is here. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. So there are Jewish believers and perhaps even saints that become believers after this, Marisol, mm -hmm. and to overcome them. To me, it's amazing. And, and how do we know this is possible? Because 144,000 Jews who are virgins go out and proclaim the gospel at this time. Just look at chapter two before this. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Wow. Wow. So first of all, Make sure you have faith in Jesus and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If anyone has an ear, let them hear. In other words, it's not too late to turn and believe in Christ. Yes, amen. Who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Now we're going to get to the mark of the beast. The second beast, people. And spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. Dexter, what scripture is that? What? What, what scripture is that? Revelation 13, 12. Okay. So here we have the thing that condemns people. We're going to see this is proclaimed even from an angel from heaven over the whole earth. That if you worship this beast or the image of the beast or you get the mark here or here, you are condemned. Listen. So remember, the miracle happened, and he gets everyone to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Again, just like Jesus said in Matthew, he performs great signs so that he even makes the fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives, deceives. Those who want to be deceived, those who don't walk in the truth, perhaps, Deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So now they're building an idol. Familiar? This has been happening throughout all history. An idol is being built to this beast who was healed. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. This is where saints are going to die that are still here. The Jewish people, perhaps, because the word speaks of it, the 144,000 were martyred, who proclaimed, oh, yeah. refuse to worship this idol, this beast. And it says the beast is given authority by God to martyr them, to put them to death. 
He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on the right hand or on their foreheads. That in Greek is api, and that means on, not in. So it would be something visible, okay? Not inside of you. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let he who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. His number is six, six, six. Okay? Now, <clears throat> pretty powerful, isn't it? But we're not done. This is going to be even expounded a little bit more to John as to who's saved and who goes to hell. Listen, turn to Revelation 14, verse 6. And has this occurred? No. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. So not only did 144,000 go out, but an angel is going to proclaim the gospel over the earth. Can you imagine? <gasps> wow. To preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, every tribe, every tongue and people. An angel is going to appear in heaven and proclaim the gospel, saying with a loud voice, can you imagine it echoing over the whole earth? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. Now listen to the warning. And another angel followed saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen that great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed him saying with a loud voice, listen, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. Read at the end of Isaiah. There's actually the ability at the end in Isaiah chapter 66 People will be able to see down into the abyss where this is occurring. And they have no rest day or night. For eternity they will be burned. Who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. So here we're hearing there's two things. You worship the beast or his image, and you receive the mark. Both. Do you see that? And... And you can imagine they're both going to occur because if you don't go down and bow down and worship the, the image, you get destroyed. You're dead. So, and if you want to buy or sell, you have to take the mark of the beast. But have any of these things happened today? No. I no. haven't seen an angel proclaiming the gospel. Can you imagine that? But, a big, it has to be a massive angel. But here's the comfort, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. For whoever's left at this time, this is written for them. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. <clears throat> now, later on in Revelation, we see all the 144,000 that go out and 12,000 for each tribe. We saw them all under the Lamb's throne martyred and they're saying how much longer lord until you pour forth your final judgments how much longer and the lord says to be patient well pardon my ignorance yes so this is saying that <clears throat> so i read it that an angel actually comes out and warns all the people in the earth not to take the mark and has that occurred no no i i think we would all know if that occurred I think we would all know if the temple was built on the Temple Mount in Israel. I think we would all know us who are believers if we're raptured, because we'd be with Christ right now. 
You know, I think we know if we were in the beginning of the tribulation, the first three and a half years, which are bad enough before we get to the great wrath of God or the, or the second half of the tribulation, the last 42 months. I think we would know we're in that. Because if you look at the plagues and everything in the first three and a half years, they have not been brought forth yet. So, like Jason said, if you're left behind, don't take the mark of the beast. Have the patience and the trust and the faith. And be martyred. That if you stay in Jesus and you're martyred, you're going to be saved. Yeah. You have no choice at that point. If you appear before the beast and you don't bow, the Lord has given the beast the power to kill you. So you will be martyred. But you know what? <clears throat> Listen to what it says in verse 13. This is what I love. It's a warning not to take the mark of the beast. But it says, boy, if you are martyred, listen to this. Blessed. Then I heard a voice from heaven said to me, right? Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Those who are martyred who will not bow down and worship the beast. Yes, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. And then we see them later under the throne. And we see in Revelation at the end, during the millennium, they rule and reign with Christ. It's specifically right there in the scriptures of the millennium, they rule and reign with Christ. <clears throat> Very powerful. So, wow, we have to make sure we're right with Jesus. <laughs> because I don't want to be left behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wow. we, wrote, and we read what he says to the saints. Let's read another one, Revelation 15, 2. We're almost done. Very important. What was what scripture next? Revelation 15, 2. I got it already, yeah. Talking about the, the last bold judgments during the Great Tribulation, horrible judgments. And it says, John says, I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who had victory over the beast. So he's seeing right now those who did not worship the beast and take his mark. Who have victory over the beast, over his image, and his mark, and over the number of his name, four things. Standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God, they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Trust and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. Wow. Do you see it? The victory for those who are still here, as, as our friend Jason would say, is that you never deny the Lord and worship any other people or anything amen Dexter ever it is and it is pleasing to the word it says to the Lord in Psalms amen it's the martyrdom of his saints it's pleasing to God that you do not deny him right to the end so let me tell you um from what this says which is confirmed in the word throughout these scriptures is we need to believe in the truth, first of all. We need to yes. tell everything that we hear. Yes. Whether it's even possible in the word of God. Because I believe these scriptures are rather clear that, listen, the mark of the beast comes right around midpoint of the tribulation where Satan is revealed and comes into the temple and declares himself God. Horror of horrors. And then the beast is injured and the beast is healed. And then an image of the beast is made that people have to worship to. And if they don't, they're destroyed. All this is happening right mm. at the time the mark of the beast is being implemented. As given the authority and the power to the beast, to the same over the earth, which is given to them from God. We just read that. Woe is to me. I don't want to be around them. I want to make sure my heart is pure and I believe in the truth and I follow the truth and I obey God and his commandments, which also says test all things and to walk in the truth. For he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. To the wow. Father, but through me, saith Jesus. <laughs> and that part about the truth is not 
lightly to be taken. Walk in the truth and you will be under the divine protection of God in Psalm 91. Walk in the lies and you can be destroyed. Hallelujah. So this can apply to many things that are happening on the earth today and many to people. Yes. It is not hard to understand why I'm teaching this. It is important that we understand yes. that we can always find the truth. Yes. Yes. And the word says we're not to be ignorant of the devil and his schemes, even that he is doing today in this day and this hour to destroy people in the church. Remember, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So we have the power over him in the name of Jesus, don't we, Dexter? Yes. <laughs> this is powerful. Yes. Remember. I, th I, th I, th I want to just allude to this for a second, because there's many that will give this quote and not understand the context. So I want to address this because there's many that will complain or write in or whatever. And it's at Matthew 24, 36. No one knows the day or the, the hour. I want to read that. And then I want to put it in context of everything we've just written, read. Matthew Let's deal with this, because whenever I teach, when I taught on the rapture, I taught both sides. Pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I taught everything. I went to all the scriptures, because that's the way you get the truth. You don't ignore the scriptures that show you something potentially different. You bring them together into the truth you by the, the power counsel. of the Holy Spirit. You get Amen. all of the scriptures. Okay, Matthew 24, 36. Let's address this. But of that day, Jesus is speaking. He's talking about the day of his return. Listen, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. No one knows. But what does the Lord tell us about knowing the times and the seasons, Marisol? What does he tell us about knowing the age, the times, and the seasons, that we are to know them? Right. Right? Right. So we, I would agree to you, we have no idea which day and which hour it's going to be. But we know but the time Paul's, and the season. But the word says to have understanding so you'll know the signs. Daniel says it. Jesus says it. Thessalonians says it. To be wise and understand what is being taught so that you are not caught by the deceptions of Satan. Right. And the reason for this is very important because the word says we are not to be ignorant in Thessalonians. You're like, really? Yeah. Like but the, they, but the example, unbelievers are. Right. Do you understand? For, let me give an example. If, they, if Israel announces that they're gonna start building the temple, oh, we know we're close, right? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> okay, Mama, would you like to say something? Why I'm looking? I think it's great teaching, honey, because um, then the last few weeks, you know, on our emails, and we've had strange people, you know, kind of kind of rebuking us, and some of them loving us, and things that they say on there are not scripture. They don't even know the Bible. And uh, in church, they're like holier than thou, but when they leave, they're full of the devil. And I think this kind of teaching will shake some of them up to really pay attention to what God is saying, Dexter. Don't you? And in my yeah. books, you know, I have many of my books we didn't talk about of deception of Satan. This book is very, very powerful. The Lord gave me this step by step. How Satan deceives the people. Don't he, Marisol? He, we know many people that love Jesus. We really do. And we know many people that play with Jesus. And in my heart, Dexter, I love, I love everybody. But when they begin to try to play games with my intelligence, you know, when they call for prayer, send emails, or even to you, you know, I don't think that I'd even waste my time with them because I pray for them and try to counsel them, but I'm not a pastor. They need to go to their pastor and get that counsel and get in a good church that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit and yes. 
and the power of healing deliverance because there's many great pastors out there and uh oh my i feel the holy ghost more so i just felt him fall dexter did you so Hallelujah. and i know the truth is, is oh yes people and that's what's important oh mercy incredible scripture and i want to continue this mama what you just said about the truth yes Dress this day and the hour is not known. First Thessalonians 5 1. And this is what I love. God speaks to us and, and he tells us we're to know. Listen to this carefully. It's called the day of the Lord. Remember, Thessalonians talks about the rapture and then the scriptures in 2 Thessalonians. This is the end of 1 Thessalonians, which is a yes, honey. into the second letter. Listen. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Wow, it sounds like Jesus, right? Nobody knows the day and the hour. Okay, but listen. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you brethren to the church are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Do you see it? Yes. Matthew was yes. to the Jewish people who are not believers at that point until they see Christ return in the battle of Armageddon. They see him, him who they pierced, and then they will believe. But up to that point, listen, they're ignorant. It's going to be a shock when Christ returns with the saints. But listen, he says, but you brethren, brothers and sisters written to the church, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of life and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Listen, that's all the parables after Matthew 24 that Jesus talks about is, you know what? You better be found doing his work when he returns. Don't be one of the virgins who takes the lamp and doesn't have enough oil in it and just goes to sleep. Let your giftings and your callings be buried and go to sleep. No, you're awake and you watch for the coming of the Lord and you're doing his work right to the end. It says, therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep yes. at night, those who get drunk or drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. And wow. here it is, verse 9. You're going to understand this because the wrath is defined as the great tribulation the last three and a half years. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Hallelujah. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together. Amen. About whether we wake or sleep, we're caught up to him in the rapture. Yes. Therefore, comfort each other. Yes, Lord one another just as you also are doing what we are trying to do lord willing and spirit i ask this truth to come into everyone that they understand all this truth now coming together this is beautiful this is amazing and this also protects us from lying and deceiving prophecies or other things spoken to us so lord right now i ask you wash yes. us clean by the blood of the lamb of any lies and deceits yes. that we have believed or received Cleanse our conscience of all those past dead works under Hebrews 9, 14 and 10, yes. 22, and those lies and deceits and fill us only with your truth. All the days of our life in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh. This is good news. We are not appointed to wrath. Yes, I Marisol. feel the Lord is saying, fear not, fear not, for I have overcome the world. <clears throat> Fear not, fear not, for I have overcome the world. For I have you, I have you. Yes. In the shadow of my protection. Amen. For I'm sitting at the right hand of the Father. Interceding for you. Yes, Lord. I, I command you to go forth to go forth to preach the gospel of yes. salvation in love, in love. Yes. In love, in love, in love. Yeah, and, and also Marcia, the Lord saying that love is the key. Love is the key that we people need, you know, because we don't want the love to go cold. 
And, and when we hear great teachings like this, it, it, some of the people will have fear. But also, Dexter and Marcia, God spoke to me today that we need to say something about the laws now they're aborting babies again. God is so grieved over that. He's so grieved. And he said, Mary, when you get a chance, tell the young women and men out there, what if somebody had aborted them that had never been here? He said, tell the people to listen to his holy power more than other voices. Because these lives that they're carrying and they're thinking about abortions, there's a woman watching right now. And the Lord's telling you, no, don't do that. That child is chosen of the Lord. And Dexter was chosen. Marcel and I was chosen. Ever, ever people that stands up for Jesus Christ, they're chosen vessels of the king. And ooh, hallelujah. And there's a, a lie going out in our earth to abort babies again. And that's one of the reasons we're having such disasters in the earth. That's one of the reasons the that's pitiful the law yes. have turned. This is the Holy Ghost. He's saying, just think back. Think back. It wasn't so. And now it's so again. And the Heavenly Father is warning this nation. Repent ye, repent you of your murder and your abominations unto God. For this is an hour like no other, saith the Lord. And my spirit is pouring out heavy on this broadcast. For these, this man and these two women love me with all their heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and love you also. They have been down those roads. They've been through this junk. They know what I've made them overcome, overcomers. And you out there that want to kill your babies, I warn you. I warn you this day, pray to me, talk to me, and I will tell you what to do. If you don't want that baby, give it to somebody. For the Lord thy God is hearing the cries of the blood of the innocent from the earth to heaven. Yes, that's right. That is what the Holy Spirit is saying. Yes. And if My I goodness. Add to what Mama just said, about one month ago, there's a YouTube video. It's about two hours long, but we're talking about something really important here. Go watch it and god had incredible revelation about abortion from the bible including mama's testimonies that she gave of what she saw and they match with the scriptures please see it it will bring life into your heart and for your baby and your baby will be born and fulfill the calling for which god has for them I bless you and your family for salvation, including your baby. And I bless your baby to fulfill the calling which God has for them in the kingdom of God. For Acts 16, 31 says to you, as you have believed, you and your whole household will be saved. And that includes this baby. So believe, turn from our sins, repent, and Christ will forgive you. Yes. And give your baby a calling and a beautiful life. In Jesus' name, amen. And what the Lord said that his, the blood is crying out from the ground. The blood has life in it. Just and, like the uh, blood of Cain over Abel. Yes, and you got to hear what Abel. the Lord is saying. Call, there's calls you can give, give that baby away. They'll even pay for your hospital and everything. You don't have to murder that baby. That's the same as murder. And you got to repent because God said he'll forgive us. There's things in our earth that are happening, Dexter and Mars. So we they all know that grease our soul. And if you can imagine how all the blood of the aborted babies have started again and their blood is crying out to God from our earth. And yes. some of these teaching, he's teaching tonight, it can come quicker if you don't repent. I'm serious. We're in a time that when people call me, said, I took the mark of the beast. I said, what in the world are you talking about? I said, I took that shot. I said, that's not the mark of the beast. And then Dexter calls me up and said, mom, I'm going to teach tonight about clear up about that mark of the beast i said oh my lord that's just what we, they need to hear right dexter that's right oh i feel god marcel you've got a word for the lord honey i just gave it you know and, and it's so important the apostle paul says to guard your salvation with trembling and part of guarding your salvation is to know the scriptures and to test what people are saying because this is serious, okay? This is very serious. Yes. These are life choices that you're making for yourself, amen? Good, good. And you know, and, and you don't wanna, you wanna make the right choices. Whatever you do, pray and ask God to guide you. 
Go to the scriptures and let the counsel of the scriptures yes. be the truth. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in yes. the truth. Not have your truth, which you predetermine, brought forth back into your heart. Go with the truth that is from God, and that can only be brought forth by the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes. I do have two more words for people, and it's 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. And again, it's right in the midst of all this teaching about all this. It says, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, what is true. And remember, it says to test the prophets, if what they say comes true, then follow them. If they, what they say does not come true, then you do not follow them. And also test it against the word like the Bereans did. It says abstain from every form of evil. Golly, that's what mom is talking about, including with aborted babies. And I want to turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 11.31. <clears throat> really important. Please, this is how God operates in the kingdom. And I've realized this. Yes. And it has been a blessing. This is a power. What scripture, Dexter? What scripture? 1 Corinthians 11.31. Okay. I'm going to start with verse 30. Okay. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. They've died. Why? Because they haven't tested themselves. They haven't tested their fruit. They haven't abstained from evil. Listen to what he says. For if we would judge ourselves, even how we enter into communion. Hallelujah. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Wow. Right. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Wow. If we would judge ourselves, there is so much pain. That's true. That's like communion. Go through if you repent. Yes. If we judge ourselves about abortion and ask God to bring the truth into our hearts, not the lies, but the truth. Yes. And the truth and the truth will set you free of the lies. But you must judge yourself. You must do Psalm 123 yes. and 24 yes. and ask the Lord to examine your heart and see if there's any wicked way in it. Yes. Reveal it to you in the name of Jesus. God will powerfully move when you want to know the truth. Yes, Dexter. Dangerous to hear the truth from others and not test it in the word and to just believe yes. it and follow it. You can be destroyed very easily. And when mama saw that vat in hell and those who were false teachers, the blood of the those false teachings of all the others that were condemned because of their false teachings also yes. killed them in their punishment. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Their wow. punishment is much greater because of all those. The, the word says very clearly, mama's talking about the blood, the blood of those. Yeah. Who you've sinned against, the blood of those you, who you lead to sin, it's very clear, is upon you. Hmm. You yourself, if you're a prophet or a teacher or a pastor, are deceiving. Wow. The punishment is great because it is not only for your sins, it's but for all those that you have caused to sin and fall away from God. Please preach the word in season and out of season the gospel and the word is powerful when the holy spirit brings forth the sword of the spirit is the word of god the truth in the people's hearts they are saved and they're set yes. free and they put their faith in jesus christ believe in the power of the word and preach it it is so much more than enough it is the words of life and they are powerful and I pray that the truth of God's word will be written unto you as a, it says on a tablet of your heart and into your mind and it would renew it forever, these truths in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray if there is even one word that we have spoken falsely, that you Holy Spirit, that will turn that word only into the truth when you write it on the people's minds and hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Wow. Woo. <laughs> the Lord bless you. You know, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. We're not to be straddled by things that are taught. 
Maybe, Maricel, you should give an altar call. Maybe people watching on Jesus. Yeah, go ahead, Mama. If you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart. Ooh. Repent of your sins and say, Lord, forgive me for all my yes, sins. Lord. Yeah. Yes. But Lord, I, I, I confess that I'm, I'm a sin. I'm a sin. Yes. And I ask you to forgive my sins. Yes. Ooh. And I thank you, Lord, for my salvation. I confess with my mouth yes. that you are. Ooh, glory. Ooh, oh, I feel the power, Marisol. Mm. Like we judge sin. ourselves like extra sin, don't we, Marisol? Yes. And we Lord. judge ourselves. That you did it. We did like those like wicked things. It was Father, me. We, we repent from our yes, God. sin, from our actions, from our thoughts. Yes, honey. Yes. Purify and cleanse them. Mm. Your blood cleanses us, redeems us, atones. Hallelujah. Prize, yes, propitiation for our sin. No thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, the Lamb of that God, that away the sin of the world, that takes Hallelujah. the sin away, oh, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Well, oh, we thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to help us. Yes. To know and to follow Jesus in the yes, amen. Direction, lead us to a great Here, church. We invite yes. you to guide our lives. Yes, Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to baptize us in the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus. And Father, I pray for an anointing. Mm -hmm anointing to be able to discern the truth in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We release that anointing in the, the name of Jesus. And I thank, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that, that we will all remain in Christ Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, I hear the Lord saying, I'm pouring out my spirit all over the world. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pour out my power. I'm going to draw many people, yield to the Father, and you will see. This message is from God, teaching you the truth. Call upon your God, and he will answer you. Otherwise, Dexter. What you broke down to people tonight, they needed to hear that. What Marisol and the Holy Spirit gave us to do, we obeyed him. Right. And this is a time in the season many are going to become hungry for truth. There really are many people oh, hungry for truth. We ask for this in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, Dexter. And many yes. people are watching tonight that are our friends, Dexter and Marisol. They call yes. me and they pray for us. You know, they're three hours behind us ahead of us or something but they pray for us and they do and and god is good dexter and he's gonna do great and mighty things and we have yes. time we have time to do the will of the father amen hallelujah yes lord okay. hallelujah yeah we have uh, we have lots of time and mama i will just add to this when marisol and i got married we had a vision and we're very old when um we pass away very very old i will just say that so we, we just, I just, from a personal standpoint, believe we have many years yet to bear fruit for the king. And yes, honey, yes. Yes. Please and, sit there and yes, wait I, for the rapture. Yes. That's, and, God says, no, go out and do my work. Yes, that's, that's what we got to do. Go out and do my work when I come back. He doesn't want you to sit around waiting for him. He wants you to yeah. go do his work. And that's what mama's saying. There's plenty of time, please. You not only yes. for, even for your children, raise them up in the way of the Lord. Yes, Amen. You to bless them and pray over them, anoint them. Mama used to anoint her children all the time. Yes, yeah, still do. All the time she'd anoint them. Yeah, go ahead and do it, and and declare yeah. your children are the Lord's, just and, as Samuel's yeah. parents did. And that's right. I have books that'll them. help them too. I have books yes. on God gave them to me, showed them to me, spiritual warfare and Satan's deception. 
And this one here, the, the Whitaker said people order this one all the time about um, divine revelation of Satan's deception. It talks about everyday life and how the enemy comes in and tries to seduce us. You've read it, Dexter. And when we stop and think, guys, this program, it is helping people. People will call me and say, Mary, we watched you and Dexter and Morris out. We really enjoy what you're saying. And they know the truth from a lie. They know that we tell the truth. Ooh, Dexter, I feel the presence of the king. And the Lord just showed me one more thing, Mama. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ooh, the parable Jesus. of the fig tree. I never went back to it. But what, honey? The parable of the fig tree. It's right yeah. talking about his coming again. Yes. Matthew 24, 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Again, we're not to be ignorant. We're to know. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, the generation what? In this time that he's talking about, will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Amen. She is talking about the fig tree, and we all know the fig tree represents Israel. And we know that Israel was reformed in 1948. As yes. Jerusalem wasn't taken until 1967. And therefore, and we know, we just read Zechariah chapter 9. It talks about what's ordained for both Israel and Jerusalem. Yes. I believe that the start of the clock of this generation is when both were in Israel's hands. And yes. Was formed, Israel was reformed. The fig tree is back in place, which is 1967. Now, that means there's one generation, we believe, until the return of God, till the end of the tribulation. And only one person has to be alive. It says, you need to understand this. It's not the average person. It says... This generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. It could be one last person who's 120. Could be one last person who's 80. Could be whatever. But we know people are living closer to 120. So we have time, I believe. And we know the temple is not rebuilt. So I believe definitively in all my heart that we have lots of time to fulfill God's calling in our lives. Yes, Dexter. And that's very important. God can... <laughs> So much, he says, to learn from so that we will know the times and the seasons. And then we're not to be ignorant as believers. So I love the fact that God gave us a road map. That's why when people give prophecies about we're in the tribulation, we're this and that, I look at them and I go, no, we're not. The word's very clear about the judgments in the tribulation. And those are not occurring right now. And it's very mm -hmm. clear about the temple having to be rebuilt. That's right. Dexter, why don't you, when you're done, pray for Afghanistan tonight. We need to lift them up when you're finished, yeah. darling. Well, let me just say this, because I was meditating on Afghanistan earlier. This is part of the setting up for the end times, Mama. And there are many things we will understand at the end. Um, what's even happening in Afghanistan um, is setting up for the end times. Remember, all the world's going to come against Israel. Um, and so oh, dear God. there are brothers and sisters, though, that we can pray for in the midst of this that are both in Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, yes. Yes. Egypt, that are being martyred. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes. Even as we're speaking. And so, Father, we pray protection. Yes. yes. Psalm 91. Yes, Lord. And those that are in prison, we ask if it's in your grace for your perfect will yes. for them. Oh, God, yes, Jesus. Under Isaiah 61, that yes. you set them free in the name of Jesus. Yes. And I ask especially, Lord, yes. that yes. it is pleasing to you. We didn't read that psalm. But yes. the, Lord, the death of the saints. That those are to be martyred, I ask you to strengthen their hearts. Strengthen their minds to be steadfast in their faith for you right till the end, yes. Father. I bless them to be steadfast in Jesus, Jesus. their faith. I ask you to give a measure of faith that over oh, Lord. that they know that they know that they know that they're yours and they're going to be with you eternally in a moment once they die. I ask you to strengthen everyone who has been yes. martyred, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Some overseas that's called or yet to prayer. Yeah, because we're getting Very important. Of people being martyred, and that's what mom is talking about. Yes. Yeah. And to pray for those situations. Yes. You know, wow. I'm finding sometimes when I talk to people, they don't have any hope. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, uh, you, don't you gotta stay in hope. Amen. What, Marsha? Hope. In yeah, hope, yes. Hope. That's what we're let, gotta hope for and pray for. Them. Peace, hope and love. Faith and love. Yes. And so I also want to remind you to please go to the YouTube um, channel, shalom shalom.org, and you look you can look up the series on the rapture. Okay. I'm gonna post them on shalom shalom.org. Yes, yes. I'm gonna post them on mama's page because okay. It gives a lot of a information, lot of scriptures, a lot more than we went over than today. we went over today. Yes, honey. Um, I want you also to encourage you to um to please donate for their prison books because yes, ministry is being really fruitful. Please, Mama told me to please remind. That's, yes, and Dexter too. If somebody wants to. Yeah, Mary donate K. for ministry w would be good. W Mary K. Baxter Inc. Dot com. Okay. And a hundred percent of that money goes to buy those books. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, and and Martha, if they want to donate to our ministry, they can. Praise God, we appreciate it. They get a tax receipt. Amen. But if we we don't reach out, you know, to these lost people, Dexter, it's sad because some of them don't even go to church or don't have no connection with church, and because of the COVID and things. Amen. So. You have anything else to say, darling? Well, you are in the palm of the Lord's hands. Yes. yes. When you put your faith and trust in Him and you follow Him as led. Yes, by the honey. The palm of the Lord's hands. You're under the shadow of the Almighty, under Psalm. Yes, Lord. Said because you put all your faith and trust in Jesus, and you have comfort that if you ever were martyred, you're going to be absent from the body, as present with the Lord, and to know. That's pleasing to the Lord. If anyone is being threatened right now, even in other countries that would be listening to this, know that God has you and know that even if you're martyred like Stephen was, it's pleasing to God and he'll be with you right at the end, even to put you to sleep during the time when the pain would come as he did with Stephen. Know that about God. He is merciful and loving to his saints yeah. and he loves you and he loves the fact that as a saint, you will not deny his name. That speaks so much yes. of the miraculous faith that we have yes. in God, in Jesus, that we will not deny his name yes. even to the end. And I tell you, those of yes. you who will not deny his name and are martyred and are going to be martyred in the future, this is pleasing to God. And you have lived a full life and a fruitful life right up to the point where you're martyred and your martyrdom will bring you rewards that are amazing in heaven. Above all things, though, never deny the name of Christ the Lord, even under torture. And I ask you, Father, again, strengthen those that are undergoing torture and are trying to be forced to deny your yes. name. Strengthen them, Father. In Jesus' name. Make them steadfast in their faith in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. And we have a bit of blessing, and we want to send blessings to our beloved um, spiritual children in Fiji and in France yes. watching, okay? And uh, we love you and they, please yes. pray for the ministry in Fiji um, that one of our spiritual, the board of ministries, she um, reaches out to the uh, people that are saved there. Yes. Ministry, they do a lot of evangelistic work. Amen. So pray for them. Um, yes. Go out and they do wonderful work. Um, so what is the name of it, Morris? I'll tell them um, the name of the ministry. It's Deanne, Deanne, you know, our prophet daughter, and it's called Walking with the Word Ministries. Wow. And 
Koreans and they are in the Fiji Islands. So please pray for them. Yes. Them and, and we know them very well. And they're like, they're preaching the gospel. They're spreading hope. Amen. Hallelujah. And pray for the church in Venezuela too. Yes. yes. And the dining hall in Venezuela for the prisoners. Just yes. Pray. Because when you pray, you're bearing fruit for the kingdom. If you can't go pray for those that are there. Amen. 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 God bless you. And this has been your Facebook Live with Shalom Shalom with Dr. Mary K. Baxter, our beloved. Dexter, Dexter, <laughs> Bible, and Dr. Marisol. <laughs> we always see him, we tell him he's our walking Bible. Amen. We told Amen. him he was going to do a lot of the teaching because we were taking notes and, you know, and. Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank the Holy Spirit for teaching all of us. <laughs> yeah. And I want to surrender <clears throat> on behalf of all of us, Father. We surrender your teaching of the truth, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> us into all truth in all areas of our life so that we can fulfill our callings and behold as you are holy. Yes, Lord. We surrender our lives yes. and we're so thankful for the baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. We choose to follow you all the days of our life. We give our lives to follow you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And remember, we're here Friday, every Friday. Amen. And that's it. Do we have a theme for next week? Not yet. Not yet. Holy Spirit hasn't told us yet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mama, do you want to say anything? God bless. God well, bless everybody. No, you just they can order my books on my, uh, you, um, you know, my site. Yes. We have 12 no, of them. They're very you. helpful. Mary They're all Kay from the Baxter Lord. Yes. God bless you. <laughs> and we're perfect timing. Pumpkin Mountain wants to go out for a walk. And now, Ponquito wants to go out for Shalom. a walk. <laughs> God bless Thank you. you okay, God bless everybody. Bye-bye. See, I didn't turn you off. <laughs>